When people think about the technology space, they don't typically think of agriculture. By hiring its first chief technology officer and attending events like the Consumer Electronics Show, John Deere is working to change that perception as it continues to build technology into its DNA. The successful farming team traveled to John Deere's world headquarters in Moline, Illinois recently to learn more about these and other initiatives the company is pursuing to advance technology on the farm. My story is probably pretty common for many people who were born and raised in the Midwest. Uh, I'm two generations away from depending upon agriculture for my livelihood, so my grandfather uh, was a part-time farmer uh, and a full-time heavy equipment mechanic, actually. I still have an uncle uh, who farms in the southwest part of Iowa in the, the terraced ground of, of, uh, of uh, Fremont Mills County. Uh, area and um, when I grew up uh, my father was a, an aerospace engineering instructor at Iowa State University uh, so I was, I was raised on a hobby farm is I think how I would, would characterize it. Um, my father thought it would be a good idea for me to raise cattle uh, in order to put myself through college so I had uh, an Angus cattle operation um, raised uh, hay during the summer times and mended fence during the summer times in order to to raise those cattle uh, during high school and then that helped fund my college education. We never had new equipment uh, so I was uh, raised fixing equipment fairly frequently, a uh, welder in one hand and a, a wrench in the other uh, so to speak. Um, I went to college at Iowa State University. I, I finished a um, mechanical engineering bachelor's degree at Iowa State. Uh, and I had the good fortune of having uh, a supervisor within John Deere take an interest in graduate education when I started working for John Deere. Uh, and he helped support me go to graduate school at the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And I completed a master's degree and a, a PhD degree there uh, in a field that was interestingly at the time uh, pretty nascent. It, it wasn't well understood or well known, but it was in artificial intelligence uh, at the time. I think the new position is a recognition of the fact that technology is going to play an increasingly more important role in agriculture moving forward. Uh, that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. You know, farmers are incredibly innovative. Uh, technology has always been a part of agriculture and it will always be a part of agriculture. But I think the formalization of the role within Deere is just a recognition of the importance of it in the current industry and how important it will be moving forward in the future. So across the, the, the enterprise, we have a multitude of product development groups, right? And, and they've been focused around individual products, so tractors or combines, planters, those sorts of things. Uh, and we haven't always had the opportunity in the past because we've been organized by product uh, to think about how those uh, pieces of equipment uh, get used in the hands of a grower uh, throughout a complete production cycle, right, or a, co a complete production system, corn or soybeans or something like that. So this is really an opportunity for us to think about how the machines need to interact with one another, how they cr can create data that helps inform one step to the next. Uh, and, and bring that uh, complete solution, production system solution, to bear in the marketplace. That's unique and different than how we've approached it in the past where it's been very specific to a particular product. I think the biggest challenge to technology adoption today uh, is twofold maybe. One is understanding how to use the technology and, and for our part, uh, our responsibility is to make that technology as simple, as intuitive, as easy to use as we can possibly make it to really lower the, the threshold uh, and the hurdle of trying to get into the technology and using it to, to improve your business. I think that's, that's one. Uh, the second one is in and around the pace of technology change relative to the base equipment that it is uh, applied to. So if you think about tractors or combines, uh, you know, they, they can be in use for two decades, three decades or more. But the technology that's used on those machines changes at a, at a much, much faster pace. And so we have to just recognize that there's different uh, different time constants associated with the changing technologies and make sure that we design equipment that's capable of adapting the latest technology to existing equipment. Uh, I think that helps uh, improve the adoption curve of that technology when you can take something new and apply it to your existing fleet. Dealerships are critical. They're the last mile, right, for us. And, and uh, you know, the dealership's role is really in educating uh, the end user on how to use the technology to answer their questions in the heat of the moment when uh, I, I need to know what the 
setting should be on my planter. Uh, the, the dealership is a critical relational element and an informational element in making sure that the technology connects with, with the, the growers. It's important for deer to be a part of, of the Consumer Electronics Show to showcase the technology in agriculture, frankly. It is a, a very a well-kept secret, a too well-kept secret, I think. Uh, and it's uh, a great responsibility, I think, that we have to help educate the public about how technology uh, influences agriculture and, and brings food to their table at the end of the day. I think that's a really important message and it's one that we feel compelled to tell the world about. We are communicating uh, with the outside world from a CES perspective through virtual reality means. Uh, we've taken technology that's at our disposal from a VR perspective and made a VR experience uh, accessible to those that, that want to participate in the show. Uh, and, and it really helps connect the, the people that, are, that have that experience with what a tractor and a planter in this case do uh, in any particular grower's uh, uh, farm. And, and it's kind of an exciting technology in that we can take them not just to see the tractor and the planter from above ground, for example, uh, but we actually take them down into the soil in the VR experience and they get to see what a seed looks like when it's sitting in the soil uh, and how the, the, the deposition of that seed within the soil is important, right, to, to the whole operation. So you can actually sort of stretch the imagination a little bit uh, when, when we uh, allow the VR experience to happen and in some ways it's more informative perhaps than the in-person experience would have been. So the, the session that, that we'll have on feeding the world uh, with CES and precision technology is, is really all about um, making sure that, that we communicate the value of precision technology to the agricultural industry and this idea that what we're trying to do is elevate data and insights from that data to help make uh, agriculture more predictable. We all recognize that it's a very unpredictable uh, industry. You can't control many of the elements that are within it. And our mission is to really use precision technologies, the, the data that we're, we're collecting from the machines uh, in real time to try to make it as predictable as possible. So it'll be an interesting session. Uh, it's gonna very much focus on how we're using data uh, in the modern times to, to try to better inform our decisions from an agricultural perspective. We live in a amazing time for technology. Um, we live in an, uh, a world that's going to change and change rapidly. Uh, and and you know, my final thoughts are simply that we have to be prepared for that. That requires an open mind. It requires us to be willing to, to look at uh, our businesses differently, to look at the opportunities that are in front of us differently. Uh, and I think uh, that's a, an awesome place to be. Uh, and the best days are definitely in front of us. As John Deere continues on the journey its founder began back in 1837, technology is at the center of its strategy. The company remains committed to providing its customers with the latest equipment technology and data required to meet the ever-increasing food, fiber, and fuel needs of a growing population. It is a journey, John Deere believes, that will lead to a future filled with great promise and opportunity for all farmers.